good evening and welcome to our Smyrna Town Council workshop. Before we move into our items in our workshop, we need to hold a special called uh, meeting. So I will call our special called meeting to order. We have no old business under our special called meeting, but we do have a public hearing and consideration of an ordinance amending ordinance 22-16 relative to the fiscal year 2023 budget. Rex? Mayor, Council. Uh, this is an estimate of some line items that could be over budget by June 30th. This is an effort to get the amendments completed prior to the year end. Council, you have these in the packet. Are there any questions on any of these for Rex? Seeing none, do I have a motion? I move we approve. A motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We have one more item under new business. This is approval or corrections of the minutes from the June 22nd, 2023 special call meeting relative to the town manager's annual performance evaluation that we just had. Um, those minutes are at the back of our packet and reflect the discussion in our special call meeting for the town manager's performance evaluation. Do I have a motion? Motion approved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Anything else under our special called meeting that needs to be before brought before this body? Seeing nothing else, then we are adjourned from our special called meeting and we will move into our town council workshop for June 22nd, 2023 to set our agenda for our July meeting. Hard to believe we are, July meeting will take us over halfway done with the year already. So before we move into our items for discussion, Jerry, will you do prayer for us and how will you lead us in the pledge? Great, you'll all stand with us please. Bow with me. Father, my God, I thank you so much for this day, Lord. I thank you for the blessings that you give us. I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to live in this community, in this town, Father. Lord, I thank you for those that serve our town. I thank you for our, uh, our fire and our police and all our employees, Lord. And I just ask that you bless them and bless their families. Lord, I pray that you be with this council tonight, Father, as we uh, try to do the business of the town. Lord, give us insight, give us wisdom, and that's to help us to, uh, to see and, and to hear and to discuss, Lord, the things that we need to be, uh, uh, the business that's brought before us. Father, I just pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Jerry and Hal. Okay, we'll move into our items for discussion. Our first is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with TDOT for annual maintenance to the state routes in the town limits. Hey, Charles. Hey, Mayor and Council. This is uh, Tom's projects here, but this annual agreement is with TDOT for work that we do on the state routes that we're reimbursed for for potholes, mowing, litter, snow removal. Questions for Charles on Tom's projects? Okay, then we'll move on to item two, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with HDR Engineering Incorporated to prepare construction drawings to include traffic calming elements along Front Street from College Street to Division Street. Right, this is just a contract for HDR Engineering for design service, like I said, for the traffic calming, drainage improvements, pedestrian, ADA accommodations. And those are still going to be decorative in nature, kind of yes. like they already are? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, questions on this for Charles? Okay, item three, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with Wayne's Pest Control to provide pest control services for the town facilities. Uh, Wayne's Pest Control for the annual um, pest control services for town-owned properties was chosen to be the best uh, bidder for the project. Questions on Wayne's Pest Control? Okay, seeing none, we'll put that on our agenda. Item four is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an agreement with the Robbins and Morton Group for construction of Fire Hall 4. 
Uh, this is one, uh, Robbins and Morton, they were the lowest responsive bidder. They were not the lowest, but they were the most res responsive bidder on the contract. The most responsive? So did they talk more, louder? They filled the forms faster. out and envelope out correctly. <laughs> you know what? I had heard that. It's kind of surprising that that keeps people from getting bids when they just don't follow directions. That was emphasized in the pre-construction meeting exactly what needed to be done and the first and second bidders uh, failed to do that. Everything you ever need to know in life you learn in kindergarten. Yes ma'am. <laughs> Item five, <laughs> approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with, can you pronounce it? Uh, Is it uh, Viola. Viola. WTS Analytical Instruments Incorporated for Total Organic Carbon Analyzer for the Water Treatment Plant. Evening, Mayor. Council. Uh, the birth, the, the, is the birthday boy out celebrating? He is. He, he, we decided to let him have a couple days off. So. Gotcha. Well, I tried to call him today, and he said he didn't have cell service. He was in Manchester, but I'm not sure I'd be <laughs> wanting to celebrate my birthday in Manchester, <laughs> but um, to each their own. So we're glad to have you. Yep. Well, Mayor, uh, this is the TOC at the water treatment plant. This is a, a unit that we use to analyze the uh, organics in the raw water uh, so that uh, Kevin and the staff can, can keep uh, treating the water correctly and learning what's coming at us. Questions for Mark on this? Okay, we'll put that on the agenda and move on to item six, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a proposal for professional services with SEC Incorporated for the upgrade of the Mason Tucker pump station. Uh, this contract with SEC and, and Murfreesboro, uh, they're going to help us uh, design and upgrade the Mason Tucker uh, booster station up on the end of Montlow College uh, Boulevard. Uh, that station's starting to become undersized, and we need to, we need to get ahead of it before, before it gets too far away from us. Question for Mark on this. Okay, we'll add that to the agenda. Move on to item seven, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an extension agreement with Dan Weaver Services relative to the water leak detection services. This is a contract with uh, Dan Weaver. He ha he has worked with us for several years. Uh, he's done a lot of work to help us get a handle on our water loss, and uh, we're still pushing on that effort to get it even <coughs> further down. And uh, Dan does a great job with the staff and is willing to come in at all hours of the night to help us find these leaks. Any questions on the services for Dan Weaver? Okay, we'll move on to item eight, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute contracts with Boozer and Company, Randy Button and Associates, and Wanda, Brenda Walsh for the appraisals and easements negotiations for the sewer rehab line A project. Th this is for the easement acquisition piece of the rehab job. There are several temporary construction easements that we're going to need access in order to access the sewer line so that we can uh, rehab that line and upsize it in the places that, uh, that are called out. Um, Ted Boozer and uh, Randy Button's offices will be doing the appraisals and uh, Brenda Walsh will be handling the, the easement negotiations for us. Questions on this? Okay. Move on to item nine, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an extension agreement with Anderson Yards relative to the annual mowing for the codes department. Hmm. I'll take that one, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, we had, thought we had somebody handling that one, but uh, our codes uh, official is out today sick, so. Uh, basically, all we're asking is to continue the uh, extension of the Anderson contract. Uh, this is a company that we use uh, when we have uh, an opportunity. Somebody's not maybe uh, following the directions of getting the yard mowed and stuff, and we go through the uh, legal process that we do. And then basically what happens is, is we'll pay them, and then we'll place a lien on the property uh, for uh, reimbursement back to the town. I'm sure the neighbors of these individuals appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Any questions on this one? Okay, we'll move on to item 10, which is consideration of a resolution approving funding for nonprofit organizations for fiscal year 23-24. Hey, Rex. Hey. A uh, resolution stating the agency, purpose, and amount must be approved before any funds can be distributed to nonprofit agencies according to guidelines established by the Comptroller of the Treasury of the State of Tennessee. We do this every year. Questions for 
wrecks on our nonprofits. Okay, we'll add that to our agenda and move on to item 11, which is consideration of an ordinance amending the fee schedule for 23-24 fiscal year budget for the adoption of the new maximum, maximum impact fee rates, as well as an ordinance amending Title V Municipal Finance and Taxation, Section 5 Impact Fees of the Smyrna Municipal Code. This is a first reading. Hey, Kevin. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a, uh, an update to our impact fee schedule. This town did adopt impact fees in December of 1999, has, peri has periodically studied these fees and updated the maximum rates as is required under our impact fee ordinance. Uh, the town contracted with Duncan Associates to perform this study and update. Those are attached in your packet. Uh, there are some minor changes proposed to the impact fee ordinance, which is contained in Title V, Chapter 5 of the Municipal Code. Um, these proposed rates are significantly higher in most cases. Uh, the rates for warehousing did go down due to some uh, changes in some of the ITE calculations on trip generation. Uh, the increases are largely due to increases in our cost of those capital improvements since those last, uh, the fees are last studied. Um, the uh, proposed ordinance amendments are relatively minor. They're largely cleanup amendments. Uh, there are two more significant changes. Uh, how, however, one of those would state specifically that structures used for parking are exempt from the fees, as this use doesn't generate traffic any more than a parking lot does. And, that, uh, and the second would change the net cost per vehicle mile travel to reflect the updated cost from the study. That is a number that is in our ordinance, so we do have to change that piece of the ordinance. And we discussed this last week at our the special work session, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that the council has. So what about, I know one thing when we've done things like this is implementation and how we phase that in. That's certainly up to the council to decide that. We, uh, we in the past, we have given a grace period, so to speak, uh, before we raise them. I think last time we did this, I think we, uh, I think we were, we had the study early enough. We were adopted them within the budget. I think we gave it till October 1st, I believe, which was so roughly a three month, uh, you know, this if, all second reading would be August council meeting. So certainly I think October 1st, November 1st, whatever council decide. certainly we could give that uh, a little bit of time as projects have been approved already with maybe had budgets for our current fees. I give them a little bit more time to get those permits issued because they are paid prior to the issuance of the permits. Uh, Are you all good with October 1, if that's kind of what we've done in the past? Yes? Okay. okay. Kevin, we, in the, um, we're assessing these at CO or at uh, permit? Permit. Okay. We did, originally it was CO, but we changed that several years ago. Something with the making it easier for collection, wasn't it's, it? It was. It was much easier because when someone's scrambling, they're ready for a CO, and it we didn't. It didn't really happen, but there was that was an accounting issue for us just to right. keep track of that. It was another thing to keep track of before we issued the CO, especially prior to our current uh, permitting software we had. It was a lot, a lot tougher <coughs> even then. We had quite a bit of discussion about this at our joint meeting. Is there any other discussion? Okay. Then we'll move on to item 12, which is consideration of a resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map 50, parcel 33.02, and part of parcels 33.00 and 72.00. Yeah, this is the plan of services for the annexation and zoning, which was deferred a month. And so we, you all have already looked at this once, but this does, it just uh, puts in uh, writing and uh, the uh, services that will be provided by the town upon the effective date of annexation, which would be all services in this location except for water, which is provided by Consolidated Utility District. But the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this plan of services. I do have some things about the project, but I'll wait till item 13 to talk about anything on plan of services. Um, item 13 is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation in PRD and R1 zoning of property located on tax map 50, partial 33.02, and part of partials 33.00 and 72.00 requested by Oliver Constable on behalf of two different property owners containing 47.83 acres. The property is located on Lee Road and Rocky Fork Road, and this is a second reading. Kevin? 
Yes, Mary Council. Uh, this is the uh, the annexation and zoning request. Um, this is on, on Rocky Fork Road as well as Lee Road, uh, southwest of that intersection of those two streets. Uh, land use plan would support medium density single family residential in this area. Surrounding zoning is REM in Rutherford County. Um, CUD has indicated there is adequate domestic flow in this area, but not fire flow at this time. Uh, staff did receive a facilities improvement determination letter from CUD, which gave the uh, developer three options on which to uh, they could undertake to correct that fire flow deficiency. Um, there are two existing houses which would be annexed with this request, and both would be removed as a part of the development. Um, as a part of this request, staff. Uh, did recommend annexation and planning commission did concur of approximately 4,542 linear feet of the existing right of way of Lee Road and about 4 1,405 linear feet of the existing right of way of Jordan Lane. This PRD is for 88 lots on 41.66 acres. The remaining uh, acreage would be uh, zoned R1. Houses would be a minimum of 1,800 square feet of living area with a two car garage. Materials would be a mix of brick, stone, and cement siding. Um, all requirements of the town with regards to open space, parking, and setbacks would be met. A portion of this property does lie within the 100-year floodplain, so that uh, they would have to uh, comply, development would have to comply with Article 9 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, one access point is shown to Lee Road with a stub street to the west, and then access would also either access the existing Rocky Fork Road or the new Rocky Fork McEwen Drive connector route, depending on timing. Um, the proposed route... Uh, does cross this site and would be accommodated as a part of the project. Uh, and in addition, the existing 20-foot prescriptive right-of-way of of for Jordan Lane is within the project's limits, and the developer has proposed that this road would be abandoned and eliminated uh, with the development, except for an access easement for the two houses on adjacent tracks would actually utilize it for access. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this, and as passed on first reading, this, uh, this does require the developer to install a left turn lane um, along in Lee Road. Uh, the uh, minimum fire flow, uh, it, we did uh, detail the, what is required as far as the minimum fire flow and that that would have to be, uh, a, a, no plats could be approved until a timeline for those improvements to correct that issue has been established. Um, development of the property will require a hydrologic and hydraulic study to be submitted review uh, due to the proposed floodplain alterations which would ultimately lead to a letter of map revision application to FEMA and the landscape buffer is required between, between lots 62 through 65 and that proposed uh, Rocky Fork McEwen Drive connector. That's all I got. Questions for Kevin? A letter of what kind of recommendation? Okay the letter Hello, of map, Lamar. that's a letter of map revision. Oh okay. Yeah. That would be a, they would modify the floodplain boundaries, and so that would eliminate some of those lots would not, would not have to have floodplain ins or flood insurance because of the floodplain changes. After our meeting with, our joint meeting between planning and council, uh, I would like for council to consider a left turn lane continue, I mean, still to be added, but a traffic study to be required to take in the possibility of any upgrades that need to be made at Lee Road and Rocky Fork. Is that the intersection? Mm -hmm. And um, with staff looking at the discussion we had about the portion that this development is going to, um, what's the word I want to use? Um, impact that it's going to be made on that intersection. How do you all feel about that after our meeting? I'm in agreement, Mayor. That's based on what we talked about, that, that would be something we need to look at. Agree. Anybody else? Okay, we can discuss it at um, the meeting. 
Our next item is consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance 23-22 relative to the annexation and PRD and R1 zoning of property located on tax map 50 parcels 33.02 and part of parcels 33.00 and 72.00. This is our um, housekeeping item we have to do. And so we'll move on to item 15, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 28, part of parcels uh, 113.00 and 113.01 to go from R3 to PRD. It's requested by Josh Hooper on behalf of Beacon Properties Incorporated. The properties requested to be rezoned contain approximately 5.62 acres and are located south of Rock Springs Road. And this is a second reading. Yes, Mayor and Council. These this properties are south of Rock Springs Road near the intersection with Medical Park. Uh, the land use plan would support medium density single family residential development in this area and the surrounding zoning is a mix of C4, R1, and R3. Uh, this proposed PRD is for 54 apartments on 5.62 acres for a density of 9.61 units per acre. Uh, the apartments would be restricted to age 62 plus. Uh, the proposed building would be three stories in height up to 69,000 square feet in size. Materials will be a mix of brick, stone, and cement siding, and all requirements of the town with regard to open space and parking would be met. A uh, portion of this property does lie within the 100-year floodplain and floodway, so development would require compliance with Article 9 of the Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the development would access Rock Springs Road at a new location with a public street, and would also would connect to an existing street at Addison Drive. Uh, the portions of both parcels not proposed to be rezoned would remain R1 and R3, and could be developed in that manner in the future. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this request, did recommend approval uh, with a couple conditions. One, the fire department access drives and turnarounds are required to meet the requirements of the fire code. Their, their concept plan, there was some concern about that, and so we wanted to be sure that was spelled out. And number two, that no construction traffic uh, would be allowed on Spring Hill Drive and Johnstown Drive for this project. The bridge will have to be constructed before construction can begin, and the connection to Addison Drive would be required to be kept closed until completion of the construction of the apartment building. That's all I got. We did have quite a bit of discussion on this um, <coughs> with it being apartments, but every resident being 62 and above also the construction of the bridge and the entrance onto Rock Springs Road. Does anybody have any comments or questions since the last meeting? Just one. Hey, Kevin, have you had anybody reach out to you about this? No, we really haven't. No. Kevin, is that a level C buffer wrapping that? Uh, it would be uh, anywhere they border the, the single family. What about uh, the uh, east side over there? The east side, there's actually a track of land. They would have to have a buffer, but there, there is actually a track of land between the houses uh, and the okay. apartments. There, and it kind of wraps around. It's kind of got a weird kind of dog leg to it, even on the south side as well. Um, but there would be required to have a type C buffer anywhere they have both the single family. And as of yet, have they delivered any design review product for? Only what's in the packet that you already have. Okay. We haven't had anything additional, no, sir. Okay. Just one. Yeah, that's what they said last time. It was just one. Um, any other questions for Kevin on this? Okay, so we'll put that on the agenda and move on to item 16 consideration of an ordinance amending town of Smyrna Municipal Code Title 2, Chapter 2, four, Chapters 2, 4, 5, and 7 relative to the board and committee terms and term limits. This is a second reading. Jeff? Yes, Mayor and Council, as we've uh, discussed uh, quite a bit over the last couple of months, uh, this amendment uh, uh, to the next three items is to get some uh, uniformity for those boards and, and committees that were, were able to, that are not prohibited by statute, to have uh, three-year terms with a two-term limit. And uh, this would be related to uh, this particular item, Parks and Rec, Project Assistance, Sister City, uh, charity assistance as well as the, the two boards that are under charity assistance which is the memorial fund and the sister city fund questions for jeff on this one <clears throat> 
Okay, then we'll move on to item 17, which is similar in consideration of an ordinance amending Town of Smyrna Municipal Code Title 8, Chapters 2 and 3, relative to board and committee terms and term limits. And this is a second reading. Yes, just, just as the last one, uh, Title 8, this is for the Beer Board and Package Liquor Board to, for three year terms with the uh, two term limit. Okay. And the next one is consideration of an ordinance amending Town of Smyrna Municipal Code Title 14, Chapter 5, relative to board and committee terms and term limits. And this is a second reading. And this will be related to uh, the Stormwater Advisory Committee for the three-year terms, two-term limits. Questions for Jeff on this one? Okay, that should get us all taken care of on our boards and committees. So we'll move on to item 19, which is consideration of an ordinance amending the town's municipal code, title 12, building and utility codes, chapter six, residential code, sections 12 602, 603, and 604. And this is a second reading. Yes, uh, as you recall, Jason and Jeremy uh, worked on this together. This uh, amendment is really just clarifying the 2018 international residential code uh, to reflect the the established understanding application of the, the code by the building official, including installation and fenestration requirements. Um, and uh, so we'll not notice, uh, the builders would not notice a bunch. This is just clarifying what it's, uh, how it's being interpreted. Okay. Any questions for Jeff on this one? Okay, we'll move on to item 20 under other is the approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute an interlocal agreement with Rutherford County relative to the ambulance service for the town. Wait, Mark, what do you think? Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't uh, rush. You're doing ambulances now. I thought maybe Mark had something good there. <laughs> Dr. Mark. Uh, and Mayor Chief O'Brien may add, add to it uh, if I don't do it justice, but uh, this is uh, an interlocal agreement with uh, Rutherford County uh, via the Rutherford County Ambulance Service. Uh, this would allow for the Smyrna Fire Department to uh, run emergency response uh, as, as emergency responders to certain types of calls that, uh, that has been agreed to within this agreement. The agreement sets forth, uh, you know, the roles and responsibilities as well as the committee uh, and, and as I said, the types of calls, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, but with, uh, to run these types of calls, we do have to have a, an interlocal agreement with the, with the county and specifically the ambulance service uh, and with the medical director uh, of their choosing. And this would allow for that to, to occur. And I think the, the chief has been wanting to work on this for a long time. And so uh, right. I think him and Brian worked quite a bit with the county. Questions on this one? Okay, we'll put that on the agenda. And I'm assuming Mr. Parker has something else under other. He does. <laughs> okay. We talk about something I might know something about that. Okay. Um, the y'all should have received a list of emergency purchases that I think Mike had submitted to Brian and pushed to y'all. Uh, these are a list of items that we're required to make you make y'all aware of of items that occurred over the last FY that we had to purchase under emergency issues uh, emergency or something broke um, unscheduled whatever the case may be um, but uh, this requires no vote but we did or we are required to make y'all aware so standing here to answer any questions y'all might have about any of the items listed don't think you have the items Mike was sending those through so I do have a, a list of items um, <clears throat> at the wastewater at the water treatment plant uh, since uh, the budget went into place in July and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to I'm going to give you the, the, the total number for each and then I'm going to explain to you something that Mike that Mike may not be out for his birthday today <laughs> he and I had a discussion about this uh, but at the water treatment plant we had uh, right at $990,000 worth of emergency purchases over the last year. Uh, but these are everything from the repairs to the basin, replacement of bell assemblies and service pumps, those type of things. I know it sounds like a very large number, but in scope of the work that we do out there, it's, it's really not a large, large number for the, the amount of volume. The water treatment plant, uh, we had four <coughs> that were everything from the heating and air units on the building that went out to uh, some samplers and the grinder at Meadowbrook lift station that had to be replaced. 
and a, a, a stairs and station cover for Meadowbrook lift station when, when that was being done. Uh, those accumulated to $114,000 for the uh, wastewater treatment plant. And then in water sewer maintenance, uh, we had a pretty large, uh, you guys remember we talked about, we had uh, 461 water leaks. Thank you. And they were getting out of control, so we hired Bison Construction. Uh, they, they actually repaired 461 service lines, and what we did is we went ahead and replaced the full service line where we had leaks on some of the older stuff. So that was a million dollar, a million twenty-two thousand dollar contract that was an emergency purchase. And then we had another twenty-eight thousand dollars on a, a pipe burst broken sewer main off of Old Nashville Highway near Hazelwood. Uh, so the total was a million fifty-one thousand there. Uh, one of the things Mike and I talked about, uh, again, uh, he brought this to me the other day and we needed, to, we just have to announce these purchases. One of the things that's happening is you're seeing them all at one time at the end of the year. We should have been reporting these on a quarterly basis and that's what we'll do going forward so that you guys have a better chance to understand what those are. Again, I know it sounds like a lot of money and it is a lot of money, I'm not downplaying that, but in the scope of the uh, utilities from the standpoint of the amount of water product and the amount of sewer that we're transposing through the systems, these are just normal wear and tear type items. Okay. Questions on this? So are these is this like a summary or a compilation this, of things that you've already come when an emergency actually occurred yes, and we already gave a Yes, ma'am. And that's okay. what I told Mike. We need to be doing these on a quarterly basis instead of on a, at the end of the year stacking it up. Uh, so we, we've come to an understanding about that and make sure that it will be done going forward. Okay. Other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hal, anything? Okay. Kevin? All good. All good. Yes, Carl. Go ahead. Jeff Craig. I do have something. Oh. Ooh. It's very brief. Uh, the uh, United Way Golf Scramble is coming up in August. It will be uh, the second Friday in August, August 11th. So you guys have plenty of time to very decide who's going to be on a team. I have been. But we are uh, recruiting sponsors for the event now. So if anybody in the community is interested in sponsoring the event, reach out to me. You can find me on the web page under Human Resources, and we'll be glad to uh, take your sponsorship. We're excited about it. I've been beginning to prepare. That's all yeah, I got. Are you doing two flights that day? Yes, we'll do two flights again this year. Yeah. August 11th? August 11th. you got to get mayor in training before then. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. Thank so, you. Thank you. Rex. Mr. Parker? No, ma'am. Mike? No, ma'am. Todd? Chief? No, ma'am. Heather? No, ma'am. Chief? No, ma'am. Amber? I actually do. Um, I was out of town last week, so I wasn't able to tell the people's family and, and Raquel um, condolences for Alexia. Uh, we went to school together, and I loved her, so... Um, condolences to you all. Brian? Mr. Mayor and Council, I do have a couple things. I received a letter that uh, Chief Irvin sent up to me. Uh, uh, accolades to one of our officers, Officer Clemens, uh, in a new role that she and Officer Beverly are sharing uh, in our community through the police department. Uh, she went out to Smyrna Middle School and, uh, as, as she says, a blessing for the for the faculty and the staff during uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, we delivered some cookies out there and they wanted to just let us know how much they appreciated the cookies, but most of all, uh, Officer Clemens' uh, visit and sharing some information with them, so I want to pass along those accolades. Got a couple things that are going to be on the screen. Uh, the first one is Ronstad ribbon cutting. Uh, most of us know Ronstad has been in town for a long time, uh, but they've refurbished their building and got uh, put on a new smile and ready to do business and they wanted us to know about it so we appreciate them located down here on Enon Springs Road and uh, uh, Todd and I were able to make that ribbon cutting and uh, enjoyed uh, uh, highlighting the town with them. Uh, next we have uh, a new opportunity that's going on out at Splashtown uh, there at uh, the SOAC. Uh, we've got water aerobics on Tuesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 8.45 starting June the 1st going through August the 3rd. It's $5 for, it's a $5 
Oh, it's five dollars, or it's free if you have a Splash Town membership. So anybody that's interested in water aerobics, uh, give uh, SOAC a call, and they'll get you signed up. Summer has arrived. Talking about uh, arrived. Talking about Splash Town. The Splash Pad is open for the season, and Splash Town is open as well. Come out and enjoy our pools and parks this summer. I will tell you, I, I typically have lunch down there on Thursday with Rotary and. We have to close the blinds. There's so much activity out at the pool area. Nobody's wanting to pay attention. So, uh, so for the our speakers, we make sure and let everybody not see what's going on at the pool and have everybody envious to be out there around the pool. So, um, next, uh, the Top Gun Night Run is Friday, September 15th. Uh, we, are, as Jeff said, we are working on our sponsorships right now. But did want to make everybody aware that you can now register for the Top Gun Night Run. Uh, and again, it'll be held Friday, September 15th at 7.30 at Lee Victory Park. If you've not participated in this, um, come out. It's, it's, a, it's a large time. It's and we family. picked the shirts and the medals. We've seen the renderings yes. of the new medals. And, yes. and we've they, got a great good. band this year. Yeah. Yes. We always have a great band, but we've got mixed tag. Oh, we've got mixed tag? Yes. That'd be good. Last thing I have is the, what I end up with every <laughs> council meeting, I guess. But love where you live, folks. Uh, you know, nobody trashes Tennessee uh, program with Tennessee Department of Transportation. We are continuing uh, to see not only individual litter up down the road where people are throwing things out of their cars, but the, even the chief helped me out this week. Seven Oaks had some folks dump some stuff again, and uh, we went out. And unfortunately, we were not able to find any names, but... Uh, you know, we are taking this uh, litter and dumping serious, and this could result in some fines and tickets uh, for our community if, if you're caught. Uh, we just ask that people, you know, love where they live and, and take a little pride in our community. Uh, trash is, a, is an issue. That's all I have, Mayor. Jeffrey L. That's it for me. Can I ask you something? You can. Did you change jackets since our last meeting? I did. I like to keep folks guessing. <laughs> Mayor, he's got more clothes here at the office than he has at home. Maybe he lives here and we just don't know it. I do part time. No, Jax is not here, so we know you don't live here. Oh, and I, I did work sure? on my birthday. So. You did? Good. Yes, I forgot. That was right. Yours was yesterday. No. 20. 20. Yeah. 65. 60, he was 65. <laughs> Body was 65. Uh, <laughs> Raquel? Um, See, we've got one uh, set of slides on the board for the Juneteenth celebration that was last Saturday. Oh. Had oh, there, we there we go. There we go. Several folks to come out: uh, Brian and Pat and Chief Irvin. Let's see, Miss Marion, Miss Don. All the people that usually are in here are out there, <laughs> um, and some of the officers that came out to check on us. Um, Officer Olson and Cooper, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So it was a good day. The weather cooperated. We also had some other council folks to come through. Let's see. Jerry, the mayor, Tim, all came out to support. So it was a great event. So It was nice getting to see old friends and see new ones. I thought it was pretty cool to get my picture made with a couple of ladies. They just so, felt sorry for you. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a, a great day. So thank everybody for your support. Um, and also just also to say thank you to the police department, to the fire department, and to the parks department for all of your assistance in getting that day set up. Thank you all for what you've done. And um, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, we won't be here before the 4th of July, so let me tell everybody, have a happy and safe 4th of July weekend. And I think that might be it for me. All right. HG? Okay. Sparta Youth Football and Cheerleading is gearing up for the fall already. Um, it is for uh, boys and girls ages 4 to 12. And if you need further information, you can find it online at SmyrnaYouthFootball.org. And outside of that, um, when you go by 
all of your accoutrements for the July 4th celebration, be sure you buy them locally. And also, hmm? accoutrements? I'll write it down for you. I can't spell it out loud, but I can write it down for you. It starts with an A C O U. Never mind. Um, so, H G. No, no, he gets the award tonight. Remember? Oh, yeah. The big word. The big word. Best word. 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 How no, about that? Nobody deal? else used it. Nobody I else used, tried one. I even used fenestration. You used what? Fenestration. Fenestration. I heard that. I heard I him say it. That I didn't hear that he either. Said, he he did that. say it. That's right. Okay. That's right. I'm still looking it up trying to figure out what it means. <laughs> you know, you, along with your accoutrements, you may want some paraphernalia. <laughs> Oh but, uh, way back. Oh my He's going back. Uh, <laughs> Chief, do you hey, need to have a discussion? Hey, let's all be kind and have a discussion. Tell me what you got I don't know him. <laughs> I got nothing. Um, I have an announcement actually. I uh, want to uh, ask the community to come out and help us celebrate Independence Day on July 1st at Lee Victory Park, and it's gonna be from five till nine. Uh, there'll be live music, food vendors, uh, HG's favorite, inflatables, uh, train rides, and the fireworks show at dark. But you don't even so, know me. I've just seen you at the inflatables. <laughs> so it'll be, a, it'll be a great community event, and we hope to see everyone out. Thank you. Anything else? No, pretty much sums it up. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, isn't today you're out of the I gotta go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna pick it up. Oh, oh, yeah. I was gonna pick it up. Oh, yeah. I hope. I hope she's not <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Today's the day that I'm uh, remind myself that I outkicked my coverage uh, with my wife. We've been married thirty two years. Did you get her a gift? Of course I did. Of course I did. <laughs> Pay attention, <Okay>. Todd. <laughs> Jerry. Okay. Um, <laughs> first of all, I do want to uh, uh, pass on my condolences also to uh, to Miss Carolyn and to the people's family. It's uh, such a tragedy. I'm so sorry. Um, had a great time at the Juneteenth celebration. I always enjoy going uh, just to see some friends that I haven't seen in a long time. I got to talk with Miss Donna's sweet mom for a while. She's just uh, always a pleasure to, to see and always got a just a great smile on her face. But uh, it was really a fun time and uh, uh, thank you for the invitation. But just always great to see a lot of people that you just don't see as often. But Tim, also I had a happy anniversary to you and, thank you. Uh, and Donna as well. Uh, and just, uh, I think, what'd you say, 32? 32. 32, that's great. Um, the uh, sister city, uh, they're going to be going to Japan here in about uh, a little less than a month. We've got, I think, four students that are going and some, uh, some adults uh, as the, uh, they go as uh, basically representatives of, of our town. So uh, I know they're looking forward to that. The um, Smyrna High School, class of 1973, is having their 50th year reunion coming up on September the 16th so if you know anybody in that class if you would pa pass that along we would love to see you uh, we're having it here in Smyrna uh, right downtown at the assembly hall so uh, just kind of want to uh, bring back a little of the, uh, of the Smyrna field when, <coughs> when we have it so uh, looking forward to that it's always a great time uh, and uh, so we're trying to get a few more people there this year and uh, so hopefully uh, we can get the word out also um, I'm moved over one uh, spot from where I normally am. Uh, Steve, uh, just kind of want to continue to wish you a uh, speedy recovery from your knee surgery. Uh, it was good to see you tonight and good to see you out. But uh, I know you're um, having to go through that and uh, just uh, want you to get well and get back. So, and again, happy uh, Fourth of July to everyone and look forward to seeing you out at the, uh, at the fireworks um, deal. So, Mark, Mayor. Uh, to Chief and Mrs. Chief. Happy anniversary, 32 years. Um, also, um, 
I want to say a lot about the air show, but uh, maybe on her list, and I never know what her list is. It is, but if they put so, it up, you can do so, it. No, 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 no. You just hold on to that. Okay. I just thought it was an awesome show, and I really appreciate everybody that pitched in and made that happen. So uh, to John Black and his team and to uh, all of our fire and police personnel, safety teams and all that, they did a wonderful job. It was a good day. Um, happy July 4th, Independence Day coming up, and uh, be safe and enjoy it. I know a lot of us will be out at the big park, and we welcome you to come out there and celebrate with us. Um, Juneteenth, uh, sorry, I couldn't be there. It was Father's Day weekend, and so I hope everybody had a great Father's Day that celebrated with their family. I had one set of, one of my children came on Saturday all day, and then the other one came on Sunday. So we had a great weekend full of kids and grandkids and got to celebrate. Um, also condolences to the People family, Carolyn, uh, all your family, Raquel, that... Uh, Alexa's passing and we sad news and we just want to wish our condolences and prayers to them. Um, Brian, uh, we had a little evaluation with you today and I just want to tell you once again, like I did back there, uh, I don't know anybody that can do the job any better than you and I appreciate the job that you do for us in the town, not just for the council and not just for the people in this room, but for those citizens out there that may not understand what you do day in and day out, you are personally invested in making sure this town operates in a in a manner that's very respectful, and I appreciate that. Um, there was a loss in our kind of our community. Mel Adams passed away this week, and I've known Mel a long, long time. I've got many friends that have known Mel a long, long time, and just want to wish my condolences to Mel Adams' family, and that's all I have. Great. So a um, couple of housekeeping items. We recently honored Nissan before our June council meeting in recognition of their 40th anniversary here in Smyrna. And we're proud that Nissan made the commitment to be part of our community in 1983. It sure has changed a lot since that date. Mark, you brought up the great Tennessee Air Show, and it was a huge success. Um, we all were able to watch the Blues fly and um, entertain us with their amazing stunts, as well as the other performers. So we appreciate, um, appreciate that. Um, next, um, can we keep going? Okay, there's their show. Okay, then next we have uh, our Smyrna Youth and Fire Police Academy. A great time was had by all at the Smyrna Police and Fire at Smyrna Police and Youth Fire Academy last week. They enjoyed a full week learning about safety and having a good time. We want to thank um, News Channel 5's Bree Smith for her meteorology presentation and the Smyrna Police and Fire for continuing to make the Youth Academy a huge success. Brian and I went out on the first day and got to welcome them, and I think you went back for graduation. And Raquel was there uh, oh. on the first day. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I saw Gabe, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, Thanks to everybody who makes that program such a huge success. I saw lots of comments on Facebook from parents and all of how much the kids enjoyed it. Um, we had a huge day on Boat Day, our 15th annual Boat Day that was on Saturday. Thank you to everybody who came out and volunteered and made it a wonderful event. Did it, we ever get numbers as to how many we think were there? I believe it was about 437. About four, uh, so almost 500 people. 500. Great. It was the second highest attended. Great. Well, it's a fun day, and we appreciate everybody who made it possible. As you can see, Mary Esther, I had an enlightening conversation with Greg up on there. <laughs> it was a relaxed. What did you talk about? We talked about water. Water. <laughs> it was a water relaxed boats. discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Water. Parker had Greg for geology. He said it was he was one of the most interesting teachers that he had. So um, Greg does a great job for us. Next visit from here to there exhibition on display at the Smyrna Outdoor Adventure Center now through September 3rd. Explore the science of how things move by land, sea, and air. And we just want to say thank you to Middle Tennessee Electric for sponsoring this event. I also want to pass along condolences to Raquel and Carolyn. Um, Erica and I were pretty close growing up, and so Alexia was younger than what we were, but um, I always remember her being there and always so happy and um, 
huge loss and so I'll continue to keep them in our prayers. Council, is there anything else? I hope everybody has a safe, happy 4th of July. Please make sure you follow the codes for town for the fireworks and I don't know it off the top of my head, Chief. Do you know it off the top of either Chief? Know it off the top of your head? <laughs> so um, those have been paste, posted on our social media, so please follow the uh, regulations for shooting off fireworks in the town limits. We would appreciate that, and I know that your neighbors would appreciate that as well. So if there's nothing else to come before this body, then we are adjourned. Ooh, we're gonna hit it's ours. Oh, okay.